Hi, welcome back to Synapsis. I'm Kevin. Today we will be looking into a tropical infectious disease, dengue fever. Well, zapping. Before we jumped into the details, let's see the statistic of dengue fever. Take a look at the chart. You can see the increasing trend of the incidence rate of dengue fever in Malaysia, which is the blue line and the decreasing trend of the case fatality rate, which is the red line over the years. It means more cases are found, but because of better management that Malaysia has implemented from the CPG, we managed to decrease the mortality rate of dengue fever. If you look at the bar chart below, the yellow color, which is among the age group of 15 and above, are the highest of the dengue death cases. Dengue infection is a viral disease caused by dengue virus. Dengue virus is transmitted by mosquitoes and their names are Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. This virus has four serotypes in Malaysia, DEN1 to DEN4. So if you have DEN1 infection before, you are immune to DEN1 for life but you still can get infection from other serotypes. And the worst part of it is, if you get a second infection from other serotypes, it will increase the risk of a severe dengue infection. This is called as antibody-dependent enhancement. Simple term, if your patient is having a secondary dengue infection, be careful, because it is more likely to be a severe one. All right. Infectious disease usually have their own pattern. And dengue fever has incubation period of 4 to 7 days. Patient will look fine for approximately 1 week before symptoms started to show. After the incubation period, dengue fever will undergo 3 phases. This is the most important things that you should know about dengue. First phase, the febrile phase. Patient will have acute high-grade fever for 2 to 7 days. It is often accompanied by facial flushing, rash, generalized body ache, vomiting, and headache. Usually, I will suspect a febrile face dengue fever in Malaysia if the patient comes with fever with arthralgia and myalgia, which mean pain in the joints and muscles. In febrile phase, they can present to you with warning signs, which I will be discussing later. In this phase, you are more worrying about dehydration. Second phase is critical phase. This critical phase generally lasts for about 24 to 48 hours. And they usually occur after day 3 of fever or around defervescence, which means a rapid drop in temperature. It is so important to identify the critical phase and that is why we do temperature charting regularly to catch this phase and we are required to write which day of dengue fever in our case file. Critical phase is indeed critical because this is associated with increase in capillary permeability. Again, simple term, patient get worse when fever subsides. The reason being, patient can have potential third space loss and plasma leakage due to uh, the increase in permeability and organ dysfunction can occur as well. In this phase, you should be worrying about the potential of shock. The third phase is recovery phase. So right after critical phase, plasma leakage stops and they reabsorb back into the circulation and the patient improves. In this phase, some patient may have a classical rash of owls of white in the sea of red with generalized itchiness. Besides the symptoms, lab investigation will be different in different phases as well. For febrile phase, you can see a progressive decrease in total white cell count followed by a platelet reduction. If you see these, you should have high suspicion of dengue infection. 
For critical phase, you can see low platelet and the blood is slightly concentrated because of the third space loss. Two markers that you should be watching out carefully is the platelet and the hematocrit level because it shows you the plasma volume loss and the disease severity. For the recovery phase, the hematocrit level should stabilize and drop further because of the reabsorption. Platelet count should slowly rise to the normal followed by the increase of white cell count to the normal range. There are three classifications of dengue, which is dengue with or without warning signs and severe dengue. You need to know and remember all the criteria for probable dengue, warning signs, as well as severe dengue. You should suspect dengue in patients who has been to an area with uh, outbreak of dengue. And if the patient presents to you with fever and two of the following criteria, including nausea, vomiting, rash, aches and pain, leukopenia, which is low in white cell count, or any warning sign. The warning sign includes abdominal pain or tenderness, which indicates of hepatitis, persistent vomiting, which is more than three times a day, persistent diarrhea, same three times a day, any clinical fluid accumulation like pulmonary edema, ascites and such, mucosa bleeding, lethargy confusion, restlessness, which involves the brain, tender liver, laboratory uh, finding like increase in hematocrit count, concurrent with rapid decrease in platelet count which is typically seen in dengue fever. You should classify into severe dengue when you see severe plasma leakage or hemorrhage or any organ impairment. If you had dengue before, comment down below about your experience of having dengue. Thank you for watching. If you find this video useful, remember to like and subscribe. If you want to know more about dengue fever, Make sure you watch the next video which is about the investigation tools that you're going to diagnose dengue fever. Thank you. Peace out.